Hey everybody, coming at you from out in my shop. <laughs> now I'm kind of recovering from a slight back injury, so no field videos this time. But about two or three videos back, I did one on uh, the Jungle Machete Showdown. And ever since that video, I've gotten multiple comments on how to sharpen machetes and stuff like that. So I got to thinking, you know, now would be a good time for me to show uh, my method for turning a regular machete into one that's more suited for a bushcrafter. Okay, But I have to give a little bit of kind of backstory before we get started on it. So when most people hear the word machete, this is what they think of. The long, thin latin style machetes for uh, the jungle for grass vines and thorns and stuff like that well a lot of bushcrafters do use these but most bushcrafters use these shorter machetes and uh, this is sort of parang based and this is sort of kukri based but and a lot of people will say these aren't machetes this is a parang this is a kukri <laughs> well it's don't get hung up on the details it doesn't matter it's anything bigger than a knife is a machete for the purposes of this video <laughs> so anyway about 12 or 13 or 14 years ago <clears throat> there was a guy named David McIntyre and he had a YouTube channel called Cole Hain, and he went on later to become the winner of alone I can't remember which season but anyway he did a video about 12 or 13 years ago where he took a normal machete and the first about two inches of it, he turned it into a Scandi grind. This up here is just a regular old grind for chopping. Uh, I don't know if you call it a flat grind or a partial flat grind or a, a, a dual bevel or what. But the Scandi grind he would put right here for carving for making feather sticks. And all bushcrafters and anybody that owns a ferro rod knows what feather sticks are and little curls. And so he came up with the idea of doing that section. He was the first one. Credit goes to him. Now, fast forward a whole bunch of years later. This is a Tarava Scrama. Okay? Some call it a sax. Some call it a big knife. Some call it a machete. But whatever you call it, it's a chopping beast. <laughs> now, let me show you something. I don't know who thought of this, but from here to here is a healthy chopping 34 degrees. And then from here to here is 25 degrees for doing your carving and your whittling. So now let's see if I can. It takes a minute for this camera to uh, focus. See how close I can get. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's there. So what I have done is I have taken a lesson from Dave McIntyre and from Tarava. And I've decided to try it on some of my other machetes. Now, when you have just a standard machete like this, this is a Topps 170. The grind on it is flat, which is wonderful. You can blend it right in perfectly. Uh, Condor loves convex grinds, which means it's not a flat grind. It, it curves over at an angle. And most of the time, whenever, whenever I'm redoing them, I'll take a stone and just do them by hand like that. Or sometimes you can take sandpaper attached to a board and just sand it like that. Okay, But for the machetes that have a common flat grind on them, you can use a sharpening system, which is what I have is this uh, Gatco system. And I'm going to show you how you use this. It's, it's got the guide and the guided stones, and it's a series of stones. And there's a lot of different systems like this. So basically, whatever I show you is going to apply to all those systems. Now, uh, recently, a friend of mine was asking on Bushcraft USA was asking about uh, K-Bar Kukri and K-Bar Cutlass. Well, here they are. I've had mine for at least 10 years, and I love both of them. These are both absolutely fantastic machetes. And uh, we're going to work on these today, and I'm going to try to turn it into a Bushcraft style. All right, so... Uh, let's walk outside for just a second, and I want to show you something about carving feather sticks. Real let's quick. look at something real quick before we get to sharpening. I, li I like to talk about all these things so that you'll understand why I do what I do. Now, with a lot of the condors, they have the convex grind, kind of like what you'd see on an axe, and that's great for chopping. But as far as feather sticking or curls or shaving, you can put a bunch of pressure on it, and it just kind of rides on that convex, and you have to start turning it up 
like that. And it becomes to a certain point where there's a very, very fine line in where you have to hold it to get it to cut some curls. And I'm having to put a lot of pressure on it to do it. So a lot of times you'll tend to put both hands on it. Now, let's look over here. Let's take a look at this. This is the, this is the cut cutlass as it comes from the factory. Now see, it, I, it's, it's a lot easier. See, it's, it's still kind of skitter, skittering across it. See, it'll curl because it's got that flat grind on it. Now let's take a look and see what Tarava has done with this little section right here. One-handed. Now see, you can, you can come back here for chopping, and you can come up here for your, your carving. I say this takes minimal effort, and I'm not having to put that much pressure on. So that's a lot. They'll all curl, but you want to make it as easy as possible. That's what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those other two machetes, and we're going to try to make them. We're going to start with the cutlass. If we're successful with these and I have time, I'm going to show you how to do it on a condor with a convex grind. First off, let's look at this GATCO system here. Like I say, a lot of these guided stone systems, they are uh, pretty similar. <clears throat> now these things, it's got a place where you can hold on to it. And it's got this rod that will go in and out for different lengths. And then there's a series of stones. There's like a, a, a coarse, medium, fine, and an extra fine. And then they've got like a pointy one for serrations which I haven't used yet. So, And then it's got this thing right here that clamps on. And it's got these different holes in it. Because what the holes stand for is there's a predetermined angle on them that the higher up it is, the steeper the angle. So, And then the angles on this thing are, uh, there's, uh, let's see, 11, 15, 19, 22, 25, and 29. Okay, and so that's what we're going to experiment more with, and they've got it on both sides. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to clamp this to the blade and figure out what angle is on it to begin with. So the first thing you want to do is you want to clamp your blade down to the table or possibly in a vise or whatever. I like to use these, uh, I like to use these rubber things right here. You just clamp it down like that because you're going to be in the process, you're going to be constantly turning it over like that, like this right here. Right. So let's clamp that down. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. So, what we're going to do now is you're going to take this thing right here and you're going to clamp it out here on the end and do that knob a little bit right there so that you're opening up the width of it. And then you're going to take it. And hold it out here, just like this. Maybe turn it at an angle like that a little bit. Because you're going to be sharpening from here to here. And then put a little bit of pressure on this. Okay. Now, first step, what you want to do is on your existing edge, you're going to take a black magic marker. Because you want to see where you're at. So you want to dot that around real good, just like that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a coarse stone, and then you're going to just choose one of these angles. Let's choose 19, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very lightly drag across it. Now that is up on the top part. Let me see if I can get you in closer. Now right there, do you see what I'm doing? You see that? I just marked off the magic marker part over there. Now see how this is all black here? And then this right here is almost cleaned up. 22 degrees. See right there? There's a little bit of black marker right here. So we may go as high as 25 degrees, which make it a total of 50. Let's try that again just to see how it looks. Let's go up one more to 25. 
Now I'm out on the edge. Now do we want to go with 25? Nah, it's a little bit too steep. So I'm going to settle for 22. Let me raise this up. So you can see, so you can was, see what I was doing here. Here's all the slots on the back side. And I started out at 19. And then I went up to 22. And 22 I think was a happy medium. Because I went up to 25 and 25 was cutting way out on the edge too much. So this happy medium here is this amount. So what we're going to do is now we're going to rough the whole thing in with the coarse stone just a little bit. Okay. Now the way you do that, let's back this up a little bit. Now the way you do that is you put a drop of oil on your stone. Just takes a few drops. Drag it around with your finger. And what you do is you put it on your chosen angle, which is 22 degrees, and you just drag it around. And you drag it within the range that you can. Now, if you want to, you can do a, get a magic marker and mark it. Now, this seems like where I've got this set. It's going to take care of every bit of this. Because this two inches up inside here, we're going to do with a steeper angle. Just like Tarava did. So now what you do is you're just going to flip this over. Like this. Clamp it down. And then do the same thing on this side. Got the coarse stone here. We're going to take our chosen angle, which is 22 degrees. So once you got it roughed in there with your rough stone, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go step down to a medium stone. And then you'll just work your way down through the stones. Throw a little bit on, put you a little on the blade. Take our chosen angle, which is going to be 22 degrees. Whoop, came out. This thing needs to come out a little bit more. Have to pay more attention. How we worked on that one for a little while on one side, all we got to do now is flip it over. Unclamp it, flip it over, never even move the jig. Put you another little dot of oil on there. Kind of rub it on. Whatever's on there, rub it on over your fingers. And then we're going to go back in number 22. Alright, so now we're starting to get somewhere. We're going to move down to the fine stone. Make sure that rod's pulled out. Put a few drops of oil on it. Take our chosen angle. And repeat the process. <clears throat> See, I'm never moving the jig. I'm just continuously flipping the blade. We're now on our final stone, the red one. Twenty-two degrees. Now if you don't let your machete get dull, that process will not take that long. Ooh, that is sharp. All right, now that that's done, what you want to do now is you want to take about probably probably about three fingers. And you want to put a piece of tape right there and fold it over. 
get a look. And you're going to eyeball it. Wait a minute, came off. Probably in the neighborhood of about three fingers, right there. About right there. All right. So now what you're going to do is that's going to be kind of like your guide to where you're going to stay on this side of that and just slowly blend that in with a steeper angle. All right, now the way you do that is you simply clamp it down just like that. And then you put this right in the middle of where you're going to be sharpening. Just like that. And what you're going to do is inside here, you're going to start the process completely over. Let's see where to put that stone. All right, so you're going to take the black stone. Now what you're going to do is I'm going to go all the way down. I'm going to go down to, I think, 15 degrees. And I'm going to try not to go past this tape line right here. Now, you're changing the angle on here so considerably. So what you want to do is you want to check your progress with the magic marker. Kind of hard to tell from the oil. Yeah. This is one of them cases where you want to dry everything. But I can see that I have worked my way down. And you can see this is getting a little bit wider than up here. So we're just going to do the entire process. You just saw. I'm going to be flipping it back and forth, and I'm going to go through all the stones from here to here with a different angle. I'm putting 15 degrees here. We put 22 up here for our chopping and for our carving and whittling and feather stick making. We're going to have 15 right here. All right. All right, now that that little section is done, let's take a look at it. Let's remove this little fixture. I'll show you the next step. <clears throat> now, as you can see, the land right here is, is uh, a lot a lot taller than up here where the other angle is. Now, the thing is, is if you was to put this 15 degree angle up here, chances of it chipping or rolling would be much higher because that's not a chopping angle. That's more of a carving angle. You got less of an angle here for your chopping. It'll hold up better. Now I'm going to show you how to strop it to put the finish finishing touches on it. A little bit about stropping. Most people will buy these uh, leather paddles here. And then you've got the, uh, the real hard, smooth leather side. And then you've got the more coarse side. For me, this is like the finishing edge side. And now a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll take this and they'll take that green compound. And they'll cover their strop. And, uh, you know, usually this is intended for knives, and they'll take these, and then they'll strop like this. But there's better ways for machetes. So what I do is I have a 4x4, four four, an old piece of 4x4, four four, and on one side I've got a piece of the uh, kind of a rough suede type leather. I don't know what the difference is. They call them grain, cowhide, suede, uh, I don't know. And then this is quarter inch thick, real hard, smooth leather. And that's usually for straight up finishing. But what I do with this stuff is I will set it on the table like this for my large blades like machetes. And I take some of the green compound and put the green compound on it. Now the green compound is the abrasive, the very, very fine abrasive. For knives, you can go start with the green and then you can go on to the pink. The pink is a very, very fine compound. But green is good enough for a machete. Now, if you have a piece of sandpaper, once the abrasive is gone, it's gone. But on a strop, once you've wore off this, you just rub some more on. So now, we did from about here 
from about here to here with I think I think it was a 22 degree angle I think and so what you do now is you'll just go back and forth like this you're you're putting like a fine polish on it and once you've done this for a little while See, so once you've gotten a really fine edge on there, then you can flip it over this way, then you can finish it off with the hard leather. Now there's something else that I do for this section here. And instead of leather, you can also use denim stapled to a board. And I use that, I like this black compound sometimes because it's more aggressive. You can also strop with that. Well, actually, this is too slippery here. That's too slippery. I usually do this in the house on my table, my cloth cover table, and it doesn't move around as much. So sometimes you have to clamp it down. See, that slicks up that edge real good. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. Alright, stropping this part, I have a piece of denim attached to a little narrow board. Just like that. You know, just brush some of this stuff on. They make a whole bunch of different colors for buffing wheels. There's like a white and a red and a brown and a black. And then the green is usually meant for leather straps, but I've noticed that this uh, <clears throat> this works pretty good right here for these smaller sections. So I just hold the blade down like that, turn around, just like that. And you're also kind of blending it in. Now, if you can see, there's a side that I didn't strop. There's a side that I did strop. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's just a real nice polish. That is a very, very razor thin edge right there. Great for carving. Wouldn't last long for chopping. About a three finger section right in there. So let's take it outside and see how it carves now. All right, so we're back out here and we've got the machete. I've got like a 15 degrees here and I think it was like 22 from here up. Okay, that 22 is good for uh, chopping. Chops like a dream. Now, I'm going to try the carving, and just as an example here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try right here. I see it's kind of skid, skidding, skidding across it. The more I lean this way, I'm having to lean in until it gets to a point to where it'll carve. I see it's starting, it's, it's skittering, it's carving, it's skittering, and it's carving. Now, this, let's see how easy it is. Oh, yeah, look at that. See, that is so much easier. Beautiful. It takes a whole lot less effort. I think there's a knot right there in the middle. Perfect. 
much, 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 much easier to carve with that. Now I'm going to run in there and I'm going to try the same process on that uh, K-Bar Cooker and see how it works. And then we're going to come back out and check it. And then I may do the Condor too. All right, that first one was the uh, K-Bar Cutlass. This is the K-Bar Kukri. And uh, you can see up here, if you look closely, how much wider this land is. This is 15 degrees per side, and this is 22 per side. That, that uh, 15 degree wouldn't last long up here chopping. So let's try it out and see how it does. Now, I'm going to try it up here. And that actually carves pretty good. Now, right there, it's a little skittish. It's actually carving pretty good. No, no, it's, it's a little skittish. Now, let's go in here. Oh, yeah, that's much, 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 much easier. Carves just like a knife. Still a little bit skittish in certain places. That stick's turning. Let's try one more stick. You have to work your way under a little bit. Make some pretty big carls with it. Those are some bigger, thicker carls. Now this is the Condor Pack Go Lock. Now this thing has a convex edge and it's a lot thicker. So I started out with a 15 degrees and that 15 degrees would have carried it way, way, way on up. So I had to switch it over to 19. So it may not be a may not be a good idea to do this with a convex machete, but we're going to see. You can see this part is just rounded off like a convex grind, and I have now put a flat here and here. So I'm going to strop it, and then we're going to take it outside and see if it'll cut a feather right here. All right, I got to kind of hurry up here because it's starting to rain, and my camera's not waterproof. But if you'll see, I got the convex edge here. Then I've got kind of a flat right here, and it took a lot more grinding. I mean a lot more, and I had to go from a 15 degree angle to a 19 degree angle. Let's just see real quick if this works. Oh man. Wow. I can tell you I have never been able to do that with a Condor machete with a, uh, with a, uh, convex grind man that worked great that worked a lot better than I thought it would all right starting to rain let's get back in the shop all right so there is your modifications and now <clears throat> it kind of works on both machetes it'll work on the kind that's got the uh, the flat grind but it it's it's a whole lot less work than it is on one like he's uh, with a convex grind so you know if you want to get something like I say this is the K-Bar Kukri and this is the K-Bar Cutlass if I remember right I think uh, somebody was asking me on Bushcraft USA which I thought about them and I really like both of them and I love them now that I've done these modifications to them with the little feather sticking area so that's great. So if you want to get something like that or maybe something like uh, 
I think this is like a Topps 170. This has got the flat grind, but like I say, most of these Condors, this is a Condor Pack Go Lock, and this is a Condor Mini Dooku. Uh, they're good choppers, good chopping machetes, really good for it, but as far as the carving and feather sticking part, I usually carry a, I carry a knife with me, like, Say in the sheath right here for the mini duku, I carry a mini bush lower for my little carving. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to carry that because this works grinding this, but it's a lot of work and it really messes your stones up. It, it radiuses them real bad on the edges. But I did get it to work surprisingly well. So I think I'll, I'll leave it on here. This will be my one condor that's got that. So on these other ones, you know, uh, you know what to do now if you want to be a feather sticking, making bushcraft expert. <laughs> so, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed something on this video. And hopefully my back will be all better on the next video. And I'll be out in the great outdoors again. <laughs> so, till then, we shall see you in the next one.